Thanks very much, Robin. So next up is uh, Teresa Steger from Humber College talking about uh, badging big demand skills. Let me just bring that up. Thank you. I think we must all be uh, skeptics in higher ed because I too was one. <laughs> so we've all uh, hopefully been converted or, or will be soon. Um, So just to give you a sense, um, at Humber there was a spark. I, I've kind of went with the fire theme here. I've gone with the fire theme just because we are supposed to be igniting. So our sparks came from um, a desire to actually enhance the linkages between industry and education, uh, to improve assessment practices, and truly the biggest voice at the beginning was student demand. So we had students in diploma and advanced diplomas asking for uh, our certificate of completion because it more clearly highlighted some skills that were in demand in industry and those were technological skills so when we started looking at those you'll see from an example that i will share with you is um, it truly was from a student perspective wanting to sell their skills to industry um, for anyone who's starting out important to think about sustainability because obviously you don't want to invest a lot of energy in something and um, have it peter out and um, there is some risk and resource management that needs to be considered so for us and and i think i've heard the same theme among people here today is what we really wanted to do was avoid badges with limited cachet in industry uh, that was an important part of our agenda. We also did not want to reinforce the notion that badges are kind of hokey and that you just get them for showing up because that would not um, speak highly to our brand and neither would it help in the long term contribute to our partnership with industry. And we also didn't want to contribute any more to that perceived skills gap that we sometimes hear about. and. We're not all necessarily convinced that it exists, but we didn't want to um, issue badges and then have graduates leaving without the skills that we said that they had. Okay. Uh, so we were striving to have badges that maintained rigor and value. Um, we used our program advisory committee or any advisory groups, obviously students, and um, job postings to inform our decisions about what would be valuable in terms of a badge for industry. And we wanted to make sure we assessed our badges authentically so that no one was leaving with a badge who didn't actually have that competency. And for those of us in, in higher ed, you actually can issue a micro-credential you don't have to badge that. So there may be some things that are important internally that you want to give to students along the way or that have value in an academic world. If it's for speaking publicly to industry and that's a different agenda for you or um, an aligned agenda, you can badge that piece. So I think it's really important to think about the difference between um, micro-credentials and badges. So what we went with was um, industry high demand skills. We started out with existing curriculum. So we have badges within courses or other kinds of offerings at Humber. And the badges have clearly articulated workplace relevant competencies and all of them are aligned with authentic assessments. If you can't assess the competency, we don't issue the badge. We wouldn't design a badge for something that you can't assess. Um, so to give you a couple of examples, and this gives the power of the stackability of, of um, badges, we have a Revit badge that is a software program um, for, uh, for design, and we have a social media series of badges. When you complete the series of badge, you get a broader certificate or 
a big badge, how, however you want to uh, think about that. And our Revit badges, each of our three Revit badges are achievable in three different programs. So there are multiple ways to achieve those badges. Uh, to give you a sense of kind of the language that we're using for those, for those um, badges and, and that they are competency-based. Am I running out of time? Is that why you're standing yeah. up? <laughs> okay, so uh, this is probably the, the key piece. Uh, we want agile and accessible offerings, stackable, they can be multi-purposed, supports modular design, again, adaptable, shareable, transferable, and I, around the challenge, I really think that um, it does have transformational potential, it supports pathways. If you think about micro-credentials across all kinds of credentials that we already offer, and the possibility for PLAR transfer credit for each of those individual micro-credentials or those badges and what that means in terms of a personalized path to completion uh, and maybe addressing that perceived skills gap because the more we talk with industry about those competencies, the more we'll be able to identify, are we just speaking a different language? What does that skill really look like in the workplace? And then we can target our development to those areas. And our challenge for you is both a call to action um, and a request for potential supports. So it would be what actions and resources are needed to maximize the transformative power of micro-credentials and badges. Thank you. Thank you.